Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Science Thursday, we're going to talk about refrigeration compressor types. So let's dive deep into it. So recently I've been doing a lot of deep diving into refrigeration, so I have learned some things. So what does refrigeration mean, be it refrigerator or air conditioner or water chiller, what does it actually mean? Most of the time it means vapor compression cycle, meaning you are running this. So this has four core components. One, you have evaporator that gets cold, uh, condenser that gets hot, expansion valve and compressor. Now compressor is the heart of the system, is the active component, everything else can be passive or sometimes you may have electrical expansion valve, uh, but everything else would be passive. So uh, is the core component of, compressor is the core component of vapor compression system. Why? Because again, vapor compression. Now what kind of compressor do you buy? Well, it depends not on the refrigeration, it depends on the working fluid, meaning what is going around the block, so to say. So depending on your refrigerants, you have to select your compressor. Now generally there are zones and categories and companies do work their ass off to make sure that uh, refrigerants are compatible because we have way too many refrigerants. Like bonkersly large amount of refrigerant. If I'm not mistaken, almost 100 refrigerants exist at this point in time. Heck, in my own home, uh, I have already checked three refrigerants. So R32 is one of my uh, AC. Uh, R134A is one of refrigerator. This AC that is working here is a modern one. So it's R410A and there are many more. Uh, so, and the worst compressor requirement is for carbon dioxide. That puppy is so brutal, even the pipings will uh, not work. So that's a completely different beast. So you have to know the compressor is needed for refrigerant. So your refrigerant defines what kind of uh, inlet, basically suction power and what kind of uh, head pressure it is required, not the other way around. So that's why a refrigerator that is designed to work on a very easy to do gas will not serve very well if you like just, what if I put a high power gas? It's like, yeah, no, no. So that's why the uh, basically the, every temperature vector has to be controlled. It has to be controlled by compressor and right selection. So compressor must need the needed head pressure, especially for CO2. That's the worst case scenario in terms of refrigeration requirement. But it does have some, uh, what you call, um, unique ability because in terms of refrigeration, we went complete old school. We started with very uh, toxic, very fa uh, hazard uh, situation, but these were very safe for environment. Meaning what happens if ammonia leaks into the environment? Environment does not care. What le uh, what happens if sulfur oxide leaves in there? Minor inconvenience does not care. Uh, so, but here's the deal. These things were very poisonous to us and very fire, like we used butane, propane. These were awesome, but they were fire hazards. So we switched to HFCs and CFC. While they did work, they were not fire hazard, not toxic to us. They were toxic to the ozone layer. So that created a problem. Now we are going back to, uh, again, propane, butane. Like that's her, that sounds familiar. Yeah, protein and butane is the LPG gas that we use. So even methane can be used as a refrigerant. And yes, it is used as a refrigerant. There is a refrigerant code for it. So we are going back to those things. Ammonia is now the backbone of many industrial system. Like, okay, why we are going back? Well, we learned the hard way that ozone is kind of necessary. So we are going back. Now, the best option that we can think that is not toxic, non-flammable and works well enough is uh, basically CO2 as a refrigerant, but that puppy is brutal. You need brutally high pressure. So you have to throw away your whole AC and replace everything with a high pressure system. Benefit, if it does work and it like you properly size the system, this puppy is efficient. So. But again, compressor has to be like this. You cannot be like, oh, tiny, it will explode if you try to put CO2 through it. So that's the compressor part of it. So what are the requirements of the compressor itself? Well, uh, it must not leak. Uh, during the era of transition era from like, you know, H uh, CFC to HFC, we realized very early on, like the reason why uh, greenhouse gases were such a big deal, especially from refrigeration sector, is we're leaking like crazy. All of it, you're leaking like there is no tomorrow. That's not acceptable. The worst uh, example of leaking uh, AC systems is your car system. Now, why it leaks so badly? Because it's not sealed. You have a, a pressurized system where you have pressure, input pressure and output system. Awesome. But here's you have a shaft that is going through the system. Back in the 1950 days, that's how we used to do it. Problem, a spinning shaft is very hard to seal against. If you like make the glands very tight, it's like, Ugh. Now here's the deal, it's awesome, it's not gonna leak, but here's the deal, it's gonna need a lot of horsepower. And once you spoon it for like, you know, a few minutes, it will become loose. So we, this is a very hard thing to deal with. You cannot make it too tight, you cannot make it too loose, you have to just deal with it. So that's why all the car refrigerants company would be like, yeah, more refrigerants. So 
you want a system that leaks very minimally. So how do we solve it? Well, uh, in later 80s, we realized hermetically sealing everything, meaning just seal the hell up. Because uh, once we use uh, what we call uh, copper brazing, uh, once we have copper pipes brazed to other side, that leakage is very minimal. It still will leak, let that be very clear, because we are talking about a metal that is going through expansion, contraction, expansion, contraction. Sooner or later, it will develop micro fracture. Sooner or later, crystal lattice will spread apart enough. Small molecules will start to leak away and over time, you will lose the charge. But again, that will happen on years, as in like 15 years, 16 years, not like, ah, six years of heavy use and pff, gas is gone. That won't happen. So that is the primary requirement. It must retain seal as well as possible. Then uh, inbuilt way of oil circulation because it's completely uh, enclosed. You do not have the luxury of like how the heck you oil it. So oil is used. Uh, we have an oil pump in all the compressor. Now that oil pump is very clever. So let's say this is a refrigerator compressor. On the bottom section, there would be oil sump. You have oil. So how the heck you pump it? Yeah, here's the deal. The shaft itself, the rotor or the motor has a shaft. That shaft is spinning. Somebody figured out is like, what if we put a channel in there and create a groove and it spins at, let's say, 1500 RPM. That's more than enough to create a basically rudimentary oil pump. So that pumps the oil from the sump to the head and it spreads everything. Same happens here, like uh, the scroll compressor. I have linked the video down below. It can literally pull oil from the bottom and spray it outwards. This is another Another reason why you cannot just take an old compressor and put a variable frequency drive to get a VFD out of it. Because again, that spindle has to be designed to work in all RPM ranges. Old systems were not designed that way. Old systems are like, okay, this, let's say I'm putting a, this pole motor, four pole motor, it's gonna be only, uh, let's say 1500 RPM. So the grooving and all the centrifugal pump that is designed for oil would be for 1500. So you reduce the RPM, it will not get oil, it will burn up. So oil circulation is done. It's a very critical thing. Without oil, these things will poof off very quickly. You must have. And uh, refrigerant itself should be the cooling medium. Meaning, again, let's assume these puppies are big. So you are talking about 2 kilowatts, 3 kilowatts, or sometimes 5 kilowatts. That's a lot of power. Even at 90% efficient, that means still gives you a lot of wasted energy. How would you dump that? Again, old school where like we used to put fans in there, but somebody figured out, hey, we are talking about refrigerant. Just flow the refrigerant around the motor. And that's the another benefit of hermetically sealing it. Refrigerant goes through everything. The rotor, the stator, and the valves, the everything goes through that. And then it compresses and heats it out there. So heat directly goes into the condenser. So you are dumping all the energy, waste energy of the system in the condenser. So that's how ref uh, motors can actually last long. And that's how your uh, AC motors that can be actually be running 24 into 7 into 365. And this is another reason why many inverter systems do not turn off the compressors. They are like, hey, we can dump all the waste heat outside. And not to mention the worst wear and tear happens when it's running without the oil. When it's doing that, when it's turning on. Because it has to turn on, it's metal on metal, then it has to build up enough speed, then it has to pull up the oil, wick up the oil, spray it everywhere. Yeah, that takes time. So you have metal on metal contact for quite some time. So again, you may have noticed that uh, sound changes. Like the moment refrigerator compressor starts, it has a very rough sound. And then it's like, it's like, it's like, I got this. So I got this simply means oil got there. So that's why many uh, inverter based systems will flat out not turn off it. They will try to le let it down as low as possible. Let's say lowest RPM possible. And if it's like, yeah, still too much cooling power, then they will turn it off. So they want, instead of turning off on and off 10 times a day, they will try to do it two times a day. So refrigerant is acting as a coolant and must have long service life. In that regard, I would say all of these things have done quite amazingly. Like you may have issue with refrigerant charge, but you will not have issue with the compressor itself. The only reason why Indians have a lot of issue with that is like our electricity is not very clean. So we may get like 350 volt on one phase. So yeah, that does fry the systems. So this is the small puppy uh, reciprocating system. So it's a piston going tick -tick 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 like this. Now it's very cheap. So if you are buying something that is like 40,000 rupees, uh, does not mean company in in spent 40,000 to make it. They will be spending 10,000, maybe even less than that. So at that scale, you have to understand price matters. So these sorts of things, uh, bulk order is super cheap. Meaning if you go to Dan Foss, it's like, bro, I want to place order of like 10,000 unit. It will be dirt cheap. It's like the shipping would be the most expensive part. So they are very cheap and they are very reliable. Meaning they like with all their uh, pros and cons, they can actually last. And we have enough service history where it's like, yeah, these puppy last. Like uh, somebody figured out um, 80s or 90s, <laughs> somebody figured out it's like, you can put a cap there and all the defrost ice goes, turns to water, goes on this cap. Benefit of this cap, when motor starts to heat up, this water evaporates and this cools down the compressor. 
very clever like this is a good system in terms of reliability it works it lasts very long time and nowadays with uh, basically better spindle design now we can give a low and variable rpm possible <clears throat> so if you have a very low load meaning it's a small thing it's only working let's say ice maker that is for picnics and all that very small load it can easily work variable load like a refrigerator you're putting some stuff in pulling some stuff out it can handle that and how do you control it again ac um, motors are generally used induction motor so vfd inverter control both of them will work quite well be mindful check the rotation uh, speed so you cannot just like hey what if i put vfd outside yeah it may not like oil circulation may not have work not suitable for large load so if you're like hey what if i take this and make a refrigerator out of it or uh, let's say pc cooler out of it yeah it will fry up it's not designed to run very long why it's not designed to run very long duration friction point it has way too much friction point remove all the friction point from bearings and things of that nature talk about the friction point that happens in the compression chamber itself so you have a cylinder right and you're going like this so all that bore is becoming a surface area where you are causing a lot of friction lot of friction so that friction is waste a significant amount of your energy not like again it does work that's why you have a refrigerator but if you are, try to run it for very long duration it does not work out very well so reciprocating good system not great it's a good starting point for low load then we come to rotary rotary is a big puppy so big puppy rotary it is very costly if that is 1x this would be bare minimum 3x so it's a very expensive however because of the design simpler nature of it it creates much less sound much less vibration as you can see it's just one shaft that is rotating there is no back and forth back and forth back and forth there is nothing like that so it's far more smoother the piston is just like they see me rolling it's very smooth again same thing ac uh, motor so ac induction motor so you can have a great control and benefit is this can handle middle load so if you have some heavy refrigerators or variable loads so you have an ac where it's like okay rooms have five people 10 people 50 people then again back to two three people this is like i got this it can actually handle wide range very wide range again how do you control it you control the rpm vfd inverter same thing it's same in all refrigeration and uh, it's suitable for continuous load. This is the best advantage of it because of the friction point. You can see it's a rolling from the cylinder, uh, basically the piston, quote unquote, it's a rolling. So it's not uh, grinding on anything. Only thing it grinds on is a small uh, vein, so to say. So again, there is a friction point is much smaller compared to uh, basically C, CC to CC, uh, this puppy to the old one, this is like much less. So your frictional energy wastage is much lower. So this can actually work 24 into 7 uh, without any issue. And again, many people in summer in India have ACs that are like just going all out, especially with inverter AC, because again, at peak load, it will go up full power. At uh, low load, it will tone down, but they will not try to turn it off. Why? Again, spindle is the oil pump. You do not want metal to metal uh, grinding happening. So for that reason, you are generally it's preferred to have very few on-off cycles and more like run it at low power power. Is doable. A very moderate surface area compared to the piston like whole area grinding, a very small grinding surface area. So it's much, much more efficient. And the output has very low pulsation. However, you have to be very mindful. Whenever you're talking about refrigeration, it's a gas refrigerant. You cannot put water there. Basically, any liquid, be it oil, be it refrigerant in liquid form, if it goes into the compressor, compressor goes boom. So how to handle this cylinder that you see is a liquid trap. So liquid falls here, only it can go from here if it boils. It liquid will not go there. Because again, liquid goes there, very little amount, like milliliters amount can cause harm to it. They are surprisingly vulnerable to this. Meaning little bit of liquid goes there and it's like a small burst goes there. Yeah, it will burst up your compressor. So rotary, good system, very low friction point, very good for mid load to heavy loads. And it can run for very long duration, like duty cycle, 100%. It can handle that for a very long time. Then we come to the Deddy. Now, Deddy is scroll compressor. A scroll compressor is expensive AF, meaning the reciprocal is free compared to this, and uh, even the rotary, it's at least uh, you know half the price of this scroll. Scrolls are very expensive. Now, uh, benefit, it has very minimal sound, very little vibration, and very long lifespan, meaning units that are uh, sold in 1990s, they're still actually working, like working, working, like commercial section working. So these puppies can last very long time. As long as maintained something else did not go wrong it will work very long time and again it's only designed for mid to heavy load you meaning you if you go to a company that is selling your refrigerators they will not even start with this puppy you're like only a big ac like three tons plus five ton plus 
there is a chance they might have a catalog that has scroll. Now, once you start to go 10 ton, 20 ton, 50 ton for your buildings and all that, then it's like, I got this. And of course, they do not uh, do stupid thing of putting one big unit. They will have four or five compressors chained together. And that again, we have, they do not even have to spend money on VFD. We are like, hey, you need lower power, turn one off. Relays are much cheaper than VFD and far more reliable. So they're like, super easy. So it does work very heavy load, continuous running. Now, the best benefit of this puppy is there is no friction point. There is nothing like this. It may look like it's grinding, but no, no grinding. Like if you look into any mathematical system, it's only touching it. And every point is circulating. So it's almost like a roller bearing from metal to metal point of view. It's a roller bearing. So it's very little. So the oil film that it creates, it's more than good enough. It lasts very long time. So friction loss is very little. And because of the shaft is eccentric, uh, the, the actual rotating, I've linked the video down, please watch it. The shaft is eccentric. So somebody figured out, hey, what if you put a leaf spring there? So shaft is eccentric, has a leaf spring. So what happens? Some uh, liquid refrigerant gets into there. No problem. It will press the spring and it will just like eat it out there. It does not get destroyed the moment liquid touches it. Now, again, let that be very clear. It does not mean it's a water pump. It simply means if you have some liquid refrigerant going in there periodically, it will not destroy it. It's surprisingly robust in that regard. And that's why you generally do not see water separ um, fluid separator uh, for this thing. How do you know? Because both of them look like a cylinder. Generally, uh, the motor will be on top and the compressor section will be on the bottom on the rotary. On scroll, motor will be on the bottom section and the compressor section will be on top. So if you have a refrigerant light coming on the top-ish section, it's a scroll compressor. If it's coming from the bottom section, it's a rotary section. Now, be mindful, rotary has gone through significant R&D because it was uh, like a very big boon in when India and China started to get into refrigeration, buying millions of unit of these puppies, a lot of research was done. Like now we have counter rotating, not counter rotating, pardon me, uh, offset uh, rotary. So you have du dual rotary veins. So it has even less vibration. Again, it still has that friction problem, but it has a bit more efficiency, so to say. But again, even at this point, NASA uses this scroll compressor technology for mass oxygen generator. Let that be very clear. That's how robust these things are. And all the ACs that are used in uh, electric vehicles, because again, they do not have an engine to get the spinning shaft. They use electrically driven system. How do you do that? Well, you have to be very efficient. Ta-da! Many of them are scrolled. That's why reciprocal are used in combustion engine. This uh, scroll system is used in battery driven system. So. And again, even if you have a very big uh, luxury car, like big SUV, if it has dual AC, one AC would be directly running on the engine crank, one would be running on alternator power. Now, why don't we directly run everything on alternator? Wouldn't it be better? Yeah, it would be better. It's just that alternators were not designed for it. Alternators like my car's alternator is 30 amp. This puppy would be consuming, let's say 100 amps. So I would need 150 amp alternator to get it done. So that's why it's not a common system. Although for truck drivers, it's becoming a very common system because they have 24 volt. So amp requirement is not too high and they can have a like, you know, cabin uh, cooling, uh, JVC excavators. They do not generally have AC, but they have 24 volt system. So a lot of companies are doing that. Many people who are doing um, basically living in the home van life, they are doing it. And again, because these things are so efficient, you can actually run them on solar. So scroll compressor is the uh, highest puppy. Because again, friction points are very minimal. Uh, shocks and vibrations are very little. Uh, oil lubrication is very efficient. It's basically the top of the top. There is only one technology that is above that, but you and I, we are mortals. We do not deal with that. That's like giga chart level. So this was my uh, presentation on types of compressor used for refrigeration. Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please see the like button, share it amongst friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show my access appointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.